As if we needed any more disappointing information this week, a Canadian chemical scientist named Qingbin Liu made the discovery that there's a new hole in the ozone layer. This one, in contrast to the other two, which are located over the North Pole and the South Pole, is over the tropical areas, and may be viewed during the whole year. According to Liu, it is seven times larger than the more well-known hole that is located above Antarctica, even though the two holes are comparable in depth. In the same way as the other hole, the hole in the ozone layer's core is missing around 80% of the ozone layer's typical value. There is not actually a hole in the ozone layer, rather the word hole refers to a weakening of the ozone layer that exceeds a particular threshold. The finding comes as a bit of a surprise to those involved. The ozone layer is a chemical barrier that surrounds the Earth and has a high concentration of ozone. It is located in the stratosphere of the Earth and is responsible for absorbing the majority of the ultraviolet radiation that is emitted by the sun. If the ozone layer weren't there, radiation like that would wreak havoc on the DNA of plants and animals and lead to an outbreak of skin cancer. Ozone is a gas molecule that is composed of three different atoms of oxygen and is known for its high level of reactivity. According to the Environmental Protection Agency EPA, of the United States, ozone is produced in the stratosphere or higher layers of the Earth's atmosphere when sunlight combines with molecular oxygen. This process takes place at higher altitudes. Ozone is very reactive, and as a result, it is continually being formed and destroyed in the atmosphere. Despite this, the overall amount of ozone has remained rather steady throughout the years, regardless of the season or latitude. Although the process of ozone creation and decomposition is always occurring in the atmosphere, the presence of certain substances might speed up the decomposition process. One atom of chlorine in the stratosphere is capable of destroying 100,000 molecules of ozone, which leads to a significant drop in ozone levels. In the early 1980s, scientists started to notice that the ozone layer was becoming thinner over the South Pole each spring. This realization came about as a result of global warming. It was the hole in the ozone layer that became the leading environmental cause of the 1980s, and it was mentioned in songs by artists such as Neil Young, Lou Reed, Elton John, and Public Enemy. This led to the creation of the Montreal Protocol, which was an international treaty that phased out the production of chemicals that deplete the ozone layer, such as CFCs and HCFCs. Since that time, there has been conflicting information on the ozone layer, for instance, according to a report published by the United Nations in 2018, the hole in the ozone layer is on pace to completely cure itself by the year 2060. However, scientists working for the Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Service of the European Union reported that the hole that was located above Antarctica was far larger than it normally is. It now appears that there is a second, much more extensive region of ozone layer depletion over the tropics. The tropics encompass almost half of the surface area of the Earth, and this is also where approximately half of the world's population resides. The presence of a hole in the ozone layer is associated with an increased chance of developing skin cancer and cataracts in humans, as well as a reduction in agricultural output, a weakened human immune system, and detrimental effects on sensitive aquatic creatures and ecosystems. Because fewer compounds containing chlorofluorocarbons and hydrochlorofluorocarbons are being produced, Established hypotheses and models of ozone layer depletion predict that the layer will continue to thicken over time. However, an alternative theory that was proposed by Liu and a few of his colleagues 20 years ago states that ozone depletion is caused not only by those man-made chemicals, but also by cosmic rays from space, which would help explain why the hole that is over Antarctica has grown in size over the past few years. CFCs are without a doubt the primary chemicals responsible for ozone depletion. Nonetheless, cosmic rays play a significant catalyzing role in the development of ozone holes in both the polar and tropical regions. How then did we fail to notice this third hole in the ozone layer? It is hard to believe that the massive hole in the ozone layer above the tropics wasn't seen earlier. To begin, the ozone layer in the tropics behaves extremely differently from the other two holes in the ozone layer. Unlike the other two holes, the ozone hole in the tropics remains the same size throughout the whole year. Second, according to the previous definition of a hole, which required ozone levels to be lower than a particular threshold, the tropical hole does not meet the requirements to be considered a hole. According to the findings of Liu's study, a hole is defined as a region with an ozone loss of more than 25%. The researcher, Liu, is of the opinion that the temperature holes that have been found in the stratosphere coincide with the holes that have been observed in the ozone layer, and that these holes are somehow connected to the ongoing changes in the global climate.
Since ozone is itself a powerful greenhouse gas, the hole in the ozone layer will have an influence on climate change, both in the stratosphere and on the Earth. When it comes to other forms of life on Earth, it may be detrimental to marine life as well as entire ecosystems. Unnecessarily to mention, this is something that should be kept in mind as we are working to protect the environment. The recent discovery emphasizes the need for more in-depth research into the deterioration of the ozone layer, changes in the UV radiation, a rise in the risk of cancer, and other adverse impacts on human health and tropical ecosystems. It is a very worrisome fact that the tropic areas account for half of the surface area of the Earth and are home to half of the people of the world. Lou referred to it as a matter that should be of great concern on a worldwide scale and asked for rigorous research to be conducted on the subject of ozone depletion, changes in UV radiation, increased cancer risk, and other adverse consequences on health and ecosystems in tropical countries. The so-called Doomsday Glacier in Antarctica is shedding ice at a faster rate than it has in the past 5,500 years. This has raised fears about the future of the ice sheet and the potential for catastrophic sea level rise caused by the melting ice on the frozen continent. We need to come up with a solution quickly, since Antarctica is going to start melting very soon. It is currently unknown what this will entail for the glaciers and ice sheet located in Antarctica, as well as other susceptible coasts located across the world. Although the results of the researchers are worrying, they do not answer the question of how many times the glaciers may have receded and then expanded during the course of recorded history. The researchers intend to drill through the ice in order to collect rock samples from the landmass that lies beneath it. This will allow them to determine whether or not the current rate of melting is reversible or whether the glaciers have truly reached a point where there is no turning back. Now let's come to the million dollar question. What steps can we take to preserve the ozone layer? First and foremost, reduce your intake of gases that are harmful to the ozone layer because of their chemical composition or the production process. Nitrous oxide, chlorofluorocarbons (CFCs), halogenated hydrocarbons, and methyl bromide are four of the most hazardous types of gases. Second, try to limit the amount of driving you do. The finest modes of transportation are walking or riding a bicycle. If you're going somewhere that requires the use of a car, consider sharing rides with other people in order to reduce the amount of pollution produced and save money. In addition, you should avoid using cleaning agents that are hazardous to both people and the environment. Vinegar and bicarbonate are two examples of non-toxic alternatives that may be used in lieu of hazardous ingredients like solvents and caustic substances that are included in a variety of cleaning solutions. Moreover, purchase local items. You not only receive things that are fresh, but you also prevent yourself from eating food that has been transported for a considerable distance. Because of the medium that is utilized to carry the product, more and more nitrous oxide is created as the distance traveled increases. Maintaining air conditioners is also important since leaks in their CFC-containing refrigerant cause it to be released into the atmosphere. Well, that's it from this video. What do you think about this new research about ozone? Do you think this impact on humans will be significant? Share your thoughts by commenting below. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and share this video with your friends to help spread awareness. Also, consider subscribing to our channel for more interesting videos every week.